Hey guys, welcome back to the Kinwoven Home. I'm Shara. We're gonna be talking about something super fun and something that I am kinda not really an expert in, but something that I have really grown to love, and that is gardening. It's a hobby of mine that I started to get into about a year ago when we moved into this house, and it's definitely been just something that's been challenging but really rewarding when you start to see the crops come in. So I'm gonna share a couple of things that have helped and maybe some of the things that I have learned along the way. And if you guys are expert gardeners or if you love herbs or if you love growing certain things, I'd love to hear your feedback because this is something, like I said, that I don't know everything about. So feel free to leave comments below. Let me know. If you guys have not hit the subscribe button, please do. Thumbs up this video and don't forget to leave the comment of whatever tip that you'd like to give me because I could use all the tips. Okay, let's get started. The first thing that you want to do is observe where your yard gets the most sunlight. That way I could kind of gauge where the best areas were to put the plants that needed the most sunlight and where the best areas were to put the plants that needed like half sun, half shade. Most plants need between six and eight hours of sunlight, direct sunlight, and then once you get into the details of each different type of seed, that's where some need more than six to eight and some need a little bit less than six to eight hours. Can you see Scout walking around? Just like, you can't see her, but sometimes you see like the floof of her tail. Her tail. <laughs> if you're gonna give me your floof, you gotta give him your face. Come here. You gotta show him how cute you are. Oh, he's so cute. Hi, I love you. Are you so happy Elena's back? Oh, we're so happy Elena's back. Yeah, okay, bye. Number two, build yourself a raised garden bed if you can. Oh my gosh, there's a lizard. Ugh, I hate lizards. Here's the deal. If you have the space for a raised garden bed, I highly recommend it. I would recommend starting small, so don't build yourself 10 raised garden beds if you're just starting off. Start with one, that way it's manageable and you don't have all these different beds to be watering and to be tending after and it becomes more of a chore than a hobby and then you'll just kind of give up. Raised beds are really great for a couple of reasons. Not only do they look really pretty, I think they look the best and they just feel like an official, like this is my garden. It's way better for your soil. It's really, really good for the drainage. When you just do it into the ground, you're in the ground. So whatever else is in the ground can then get into your nice little garden bed. So putting um, all of your vegetables in a really secure raised bed is just kind of a little bit more of a protectant and allows you to have a lot better quality vegetables and soil. And it's also a lot better on your back. If you guys have a really small patio or if you just don't have that big of a backyard, another really great option is to have a garden in a wheelbarrow. Shh, not near any crows. Caw -caw! Putting them in a wheelbarrow is great. You can move them around. So if you have sunlight in one area of your porch, during one time and then you want to move it to the other side so it gets maximum sunlight, that's great. You can also put them in pots. So if you have any extra pots, those are great to do like strawberries or tomatoes or things like that. So even if you don't have a backyard or if you don't have a very big backyard, you can still make a garden happen. Number three, start with really healthy soil. For every garden in order for it to succeed, it's gonna need two things, lots of sunlight, and really, really good soil. For me, we did 50% soil, organic soil, and 50% compost. The compost is like the food and the nutrients, especially if you're wanting to go more organic with your growing. It's just kind of like the best nutrients and the best food for your plants. If you do a raised bed, it is kind of a big ordeal to get enough soil to fill the raised bed. If you guys are members of the design session last year, I showed you guys how we built this whole thing. We needed Tyler's truck to get the soil, and it was quite the scary task. I think Elena was like knee deep in cow manure, because that's in soil and compost, in case you didn't know. And a bonus tip, if you see worms in your soil, that's actually a good thing. I know, worms are like totally gross. I don't know, I'm not that weirded out by worms, to be honest. Some people like hate worms. I, I mean, I don't love them, but I'm more like hate spiders. But if you see worms in your soil, that means it's really healthy and um, you're good to go. So worms are a good thing. Number four, plant things that you love to eat. Really the biggest thing here is pick like five to seven things that you put in your one garden bed. I did plant a couple of different herbs and I realized when I, when I picked all these different herbs, I had to use them or else they're gonna start to flower and when things flower, 
They actually don't like taste as good. You also wanna make sure you don't overcrowd your garden. So if you look on the back of all the seed packets or if you buy uh, plants like already kind of sprouted, there'll be like a little card that they put in the pot and it'll tell you put this like six to 12 inches away from something else or whatever. You don't realize they're gonna grow really big. Like my kale, look at my kale. Once you go through one season of planting and harvesting, you'll realize what you ate more of and what you wish you had. Like for me, I loved growing lettuce and I really liked growing carrots, but I think I only got like three carrots out of the whole six months it took for them to grow. My tomato plant gave me a lot of tomatoes and I did get a couple of peppers, but for the most part, I think the easiest things to start with are gonna be like radishes, kale, lettuce, arugula. Oh my gosh, I had so much arugula. And then also rosemary. When you start getting into root vegetables or things like that, you have to really make sure you have the environment for that and the right amount of sun and the right amount of room and all that stuff because they can take up a lot of space. If you want a really easy option, you can also try to plant zucchinis. Those usually grow really well. Number five, you need to make sure you maintain your garden. So this means every other day, maybe every day if you want, going out there and checking to make sure that things are growing properly, they have enough water, you're not over watering, et cetera. And when it comes to actually watering your garden, you wanna make sure that you water enough, but not too much. And when you do water, you wanna water the roots and not the leaves. Um, I know with my tomato plant, I watered in the early evening. Thank you so much. <gasps> I did notice with my tomato plant, I would water around four o'clock. They say to water in the, like around four o'clock or at like eight in the morning, but you should never water in the middle of the day. You wanna give the water enough time to soak into the soil before the, the direct sunlight comes in and like almost burns the leaves. The problem with watering later in the evening or later in the afternoon is if it doesn't have a lot of sun at that hour and you get any water on the leaves, you can develop this white, fungus, which is what happened to my tomato plant, and it causes the leaves to die really quickly and it can spread to the rest of your plants, which you don't want. Just make sure that you check your garden every week. Trim off any leaves that happen to look dead or have any white powdery material on them or just look like there's something weird going on. And then just make sure you water enough to where you're not overwatering, you're not underwatering, which for me has been like every other day, giving it a light sprinkle and checking the soil to see how damp the soil is once you go in which requires you to put your hand in there, and if you see a worm, remember, worms are good. Number six, harvest your vegetables when they're ready to be harvested. This is important because your vegetables are gonna taste the best when they are perfectly ready to be picked or cut or pruned or harvested from the plant. For me, I let my arugula grow really, really long and it started flowering which totally affects the taste of the arugula, which is not good. So once you see that it's ready at that point to be harvested, you wanna make sure that you're diligent every week going out there and trimming what's ready to be eaten and making sure that you're eating it or giving it to a neighbor or a family friend or whoever. A really helpful tip with this is when you do plant seeds, write down on a calendar or on your phone somewhere what you planted and on the back of the seed packet, it'll tell you six to eight weeks or three months or whatever until that particular seed will be ready to be harvested and when it'll start sprouting. And also getting those little seed markers, that way you remember what the heck you planted because I have totally planted, I wish they could see your face right now. There she goes. Putting in those seed markers will help you remember not only what you planted, but where that area stops and where the next one begins. And you'll have like a couple weeks where it's all dirt. So you need to give it some time to then remember, oh yeah, it's like Christmas. It's like, oh yeah, I put arugula there. I remember now. So if you have your little markers, then you won't forget. And just remember your first harvest season, just have fun with it and play around with what works and what doesn't. For me, I didn't quite understand the whole sunlight thing when I first planted everything. Like for me, I probably won't do carrots again because they didn't work that well in that particular corner. Maybe I'll try it in a different corner where it gets more sun. Also, I do know that arugula and lettuce works really, really well for me. So I'll probably do that again. Okay, so last but not least, here's a few of my tools that I love that I think will be really helpful for you guys. The first is this little knee pad. It's very light, it's just a piece of foam. If you are gonna be doing a lot of gardening, this is just a really convenient thing to have. Obviously, you just put your knees on it and it is squishy so your knees don't get hurt. The next, you need a good pair of gloves. So I have tried both types. I've tried gloves that are short and I've tried gloves that are long. And the consensus is 
the long gloves are better, especially if you're gonna be getting in the dirt. If you're planting, you want long gloves. If you're just trimming and cleaning, you could do short gloves, but I don't know. There's nothing like getting dirt in your glove when it's short and then it's just gross. This is actually like a mini hoe. It's a handy hoe. <laughs> I think I got this at Home Depot. But this is great when um, you're just initially starting out, you wanna move your soil around. This is good because it'll break up any of the root systems that you had previous or any weeds or anything like that. This is obviously really great when you're trying to dig a hole, you're wanting to plant any specific crops. And then this is also really good. I don't know what this guy's called. A rake. Oh, this is called a rake. You use your hoe first to really get <laughs> the root system out of the way. And then you wanna rake everything to get it all clean and even. And then you wanna dig a hole, and then you put the plant in. You need all three. And they're cute, wood and steel. Last but not least, I have these cute little gardening scissors. And then I have ones that are a little bit longer. And these are really great um, when you are wanting to trim any of the dead leaves off of things. For me, I have like a lot of lettuces and things when I wanna harvest those. You don't wanna rip them off of the stem. You wanna kinda of clip them off. And these are just like, they look really cute, so. And cut! Okay guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope that this was a helpful and informative and kind of fun seasonal video. And I hope it inspired you guys to maybe start your own garden. Even if you don't have a huge backyard, you can do it in a wheelbarrow. As I said, I'm no expert in this, but it has been a super fun journey for me. It's kind of like your tomato plant is like your little pet or like your little buddy and you get to grow it and see it bear fruit. And it's just like really fun and really rewarding. So highly recommend it. Don't forget to leave me any of your tips and tricks. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.